Hello and welcome to this topic, the volume of solid of revolution. That the definite integral can be used to calculate area is not surprising. It was invented for that purpose. But uses of integral go far beyond that applications. Many quantities can be thought of as a result of slicing something into small pieces, then approximating each piece, adding up, and take the limit as the pieces shrink in size. This method of slice, approximate, and integrate can be used to find the volumes of the solid, provided that the volume of each slice is easy to approximate. Today we are going to discuss solids of revolution. So the first type of method is method of disk. When a play region lying entirely on one side of fixed line in its plane is revolved about that line, then it generates a solid of revolution. The fixed line is called the axis of the solid of revolution. As an illustration, if the region bounded by a semicircle and its diameter is revolved about that diameter, it sweeps up a spherical solid. If the region inside a right triangle is revolved about one of its legs, what is the solid? Yeah, it's easy to say that it, it generates a conical solid. So, our question is, how to find the volume of solid of revolution? Take this bottle as an example. First, we slice it into many pieces. And each piece is a thin corn-shaped object. So we can approximate the volume as a cylinder. We choose a typical piece at point X, and the thickness of the piece is dx. The radius is y, that is f of x. So the approximation of the volume of the disk is pi f squared times dx. And the total volume is a definite integral of the function, that pi f squared. Now let's see one example. Find the volume of the solid revolution obtained by revolving the plane region R bounded by y is square root of x, the x-axis, and the line x4 about the x-axis. Now let's see this figure. Who would like to share your ideas about this problem? All right, Jovenson, could you tell me how to solve this? The region R with a typical slice is displayed as the left part of a figure. When revolved, about the x-axis, this region generates a solid revolution and the slice generates a disk, a thin coin-shaped object. We approximate the volume of this disk with delta v approximately equals pi times square root x squared times delta x, and then integrate. Okay, thank you so much. It's very good. Now let's see the definite integral. Just now we find it's pi times the definite integral, and this integral is easy to find because the antiderivative is x squared over 2. Then we plug in the limits, we will find the total volume. Before we move on, let's think about one question. Is this answer reasonable? Yes. The right circular cylinder that contains the solid has a volume of v is equal to pi times 2 squared times 4, and is 16 pi. And half this number seems reasonable. Example 2. Find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by the curve y is equal to x cubed and the y-axis, and the line y is 3 about the y-axis. Now let's see the picture. Alright, is there anyone who want to share? 
Okay, please, Jonathan, could you answer this question? Here we slice horizontally, which makes y the choice for the integration variable. Note that y equals x cubed if and only if x equals cube root of y and delta v approximately equals cube root of y squared times delta y. The volume is therefore like this. All right, Jonathan get the right volume, and the volume is pi r squared. And here, the difference is we revolve it above the y-axis. So the radius is x. We express x with y, so pi x squared. We get the integral with pi x squared. And we find the definite integral value. We integrate it, we will find the total volume. All right, that's all for this section. See you next time.